For this project, you will need a blank that is two and a half inches by two and a half inches by eight inches long, another that is a two and a half inch cube, a six inch length of half inch dowel, and about 18 inches of stringer cord. Start by marking the center lengthwise on the longer blank on two sides, then mark one and three quarters inches in from the end on both of those sides. At one of those marks, drill a half inch hole all the way through the blank, and then, on the other marked side, drill a one inch hole all the way through. This is what your blank should look like. Mount the blank between centers on the lathe and begin by turning it round. The final diameter of the end with the holes will be about an inch and three quarters. The handle diameter really doesn't matter, but I like mine at about an inch and a quarter. The rest of the dimensions and design really don't make a difference. This is just the form I've come to like. This is my first project with my new Harvey T40 lathe, and I think I'm falling in love. This thing is built so well. The industrial servo motor has a crazy quick response time when adjusting the speed, and the castings are seriously heavy duty. The fit and finish on this thing has far exceeded my expectations. Once you've got a shape that you like, move on to sanding, up to about 320 or 400 grit. Then remove the launcher from the lathe and trim off the ends at the bandsaw. Next, flush up the ends. You can use a chisel or a sanding block, but I prefer the belt sander. That's it for the launcher. Then it's on to preparing the blank that will become the spinning top. Start by drilling a half inch hole about one inch deep in the center of the blank. Then glue in a three inch length of the dowel. I've been using Starbond Medium CA glue for speed, but you could go with five minute epoxy or wood glue as well. After turning these tops several different ways, I found that the best method is to hold it by the dowel and a collet chuck. The collet uses a threaded rod as a drawbar and is tightened down with a washer and a star knob. I use tailstock support as long as possible with these because the weak point is the connection between the dowel and the blank. Too much lateral pressure without tailstock support could cause this thing to go flying. Here you can see me turning it round and then truing up both ends. Once it is trued up, you can turn it to its final shape. I prefer to keep it pretty round and not make too severe a point at the end. This keeps the center of gravity lower and lets it spin longer. Again, you can experiment and find a shape that you like best. Try a few different designs and see what performs the best for you. Once I've got a shape that I like, I remove the tailstock support and clean up the tip with very light pressure. It doesn't take much of a point to make this thing really spin. Then it's back to sanding. Spend a little time here as this makes all the difference in the feel and quality of the final piece. All the parts are basically done at this point, but to make this top and launcher perform best, it's a good idea to sand the dowel a little to allow it to spin more freely in the launcher. Then mark a spot near the bottom of the dowel inside the launcher and drill a 1 8 inch hole about halfway through. This will hold the string in place while you wind the top. With the remaining 3 inches of dowel, make a pull handle by drilling a 1 8 inch hole through the center. 
Tie a knot in one end of the string and feed it through the handle. All that's left is to have some fun. Get used to winding this thing up because if your kids are like mine, you will do it about a hundred times a day.